Hi, in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about pivot tables. Now, we've spent much of the course learning to pro do things by programming, but it wouldn't really be fair to finish up without at least showing you one of these powerful tools that'll let you do a lot of what you want to do without programming. So let's take a look. A pivot table gives you a way to summarize, group, and compare your data from your spreadsheet. It lets you do a lot of the things that you could do with, say, some ifs and count ifs. Of course, it's not as general as programming can be, but a lot of times it will let you do what you wanted to do much more easily. And as Walkenbach says in his book, the pivot table feature is arguably Excel's most innovative and powerful feature. So what we're going to do is look at a small example that we'll create based on the Real Estate Loops application. So if you look at my spreadsheet here, I've run the Real Estate Loops a number of times and I just made up some data to fill in. So here it is. I'm going to show you the examples on a Windows computer. The Mac is very similar and some of the slides in this show you what the Mac interface looks like for creating pivot tables. So okay, I'm going to follow along with my uh, actual spreadsheet as we go through these. So we'll, we'll start with some example data here. And you should have your data in a contiguous rectangular block. So I'm going to work with this data here. And every column should have a header. So get rid of any blank rows or squares or columns within the data before you start. You can highlight your data range or you can just select the upper corner like I'm doing here and then let Excel figure it out. So for Windows, we go to the Insert tab and choose Pivot Table. And this is going to use from A1 to D17. So it's showing you the contiguous area. And because I have a blank column here, it's not including this. OK, what I'm going to do is choose, choose to put it on a new worksheet. Now, I have a pivot table already created on this tab called Pivot. And that's posted for you to look at. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new one here. So I'll just go ahead and, and select New Worksheet and hit OK. All right, now it's ready to create my pivot table. So let's come back over here. This shows you the screenshot of the Mac and how you find the pivot table icon in the data tab. OK, now we're back on Windows. Again, the Mac dialog is very similar. Uh, this shows you the dialog we just went through. And now what we want to do next is to choose some fields. So um, what I'm going to do is choose neighborhood. And it gives me this. It shows me the values, the row labels for the neighborhoods. OK. So this is the beginning of my pivot table. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, one thing I can do is sort. So by looking here, I can choose sort A to Z. And now I have it in alphabetical order. OK. All right, so let's continue. So next, what I want to do is um, find the sum of prices for the neighborhoods. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this. Let's see. I, think I can probably drag it. Well, that'll give me the count. Let's choose price as well. OK. Oh, all right. And just by choosing price, it gives me the sum of prices. And by the way, my live copy is different from this copy because I used a different data table to create it. So you can see how I can quickly, by using the pivot table, get my neighborhoods and the sum of the sales in each one, which you'll remember we went through something much more elaborate to do with count ifs. Now, what else can we do? If I also choose agent, this is really nice. Um, what I've got here is a breakdown by agent within each neighborhood, and it's still showing me the totals for the neighborhoods. OK, so you can begin to see the power of this tool. 
Okay, now suppose I want to start over. Let's unselect everything. And now I'll select agent first. So here's my list of agents. I'm not going to bother to sort them this time. Okay, and now I'll add price to see the totals for the agents. Okay, and you can see down here, it's also filling these in. And so good. Now I'll add neighborhood. So by doing things in a different order, I now have my major categories as agents and the breakdown by neighborhoods. So this is my final result and I can add some formatting for the columns. So here, let's just format these as dollars. Uh, okay, and that gives us a very nice little summary table of our sales for the period. Okay. Now, there's other ways to do it. Instead of clicking the boxes by the field names, you can drag them. So let's undo this. Let's click on here. This brings back my creator, my field list. Now, what I can do is just grab this and drag it. You can see that. Um, let's drag price over to the sum of values and um, break it down by neighborhood. And you can see I got the same result. So again, it's the order that I do things in that creates the table in this particular format. Okay. Now, you can also apply filters. So let's come back over here. For example, you might want to see only entries greater than a certain amount or something like that. Um, let's see. Value filters greater than, let's say, 1 million. Okay. Okay. Um, value filters greater than, uh, these are all bigger than 1 million, so Let's make it greater than uh, 1.5. Oh, oh. oh, you know what? My number was just too small before. It was 100,000. Okay, now this should work. Yeah. All right, I filtered out the smaller ones. So sorry about that. I fumbled around a little, but you can see the main idea. Okay. Uh, you can clear the filter so that all the data shows again. So let's see if I can do that. Um, clear filter. There we are. And I included some slides that show you doing the same kind of thing on the Mac version. So this is what the uh, pivot table field list looks like on the Mac. And the basic operation is extremely similar. Okay, and this just goes through and shows you doing the same kind of thing on the Mac. Okay, so the bottom line, pivot tables are a very useful and powerful tool. You, of course, can do everything with programming that you could do with pivot tables, but if the pivot table takes care of what you need, it's much, much quicker to use. Play around with it as usual. Play around with it a bit to learn how to use it, and it really shines when it's applied to a big data set and helps you get an overview of what you care about um, very nicely and very easily. So again, um, go ahead. You can use the example I uploaded or use one that you have available yourself and just give it a try. And I'm sure you'll be happy with how the pivot tables work.